Hello, my name is Ekaterina and in today's video we will discuss the custom property wrappers in Swift. What are those property wrappers? Why should I bother to know about them? And how do they help me to write a better quality code? On all of those questions I will give an answer in this video. So before we start, make sure you subscribe on my channel, hit the bell button and let's go! Property wrappers are actually a super tool that I like a lot. They are similar to hashtags on Instagram. We can mark every property with them and create our own wrappers. We write a block of code where we will tell how property should behave. And when we put the name of the property wrappers in front of the property, it complies to the code we wrote. We can reuse the code by applying it to as many properties as we want. Scientifically speaking, property wrappers are a separate layer between property storage and definition. We can either create a wrapper or use an existing one. I'm sure you have seen a built-in property wrappers such as state, binding, environment and so on. I think it's easy to understand the topic if we try to create our own property wrapper. Let's make our own simple property wrapper. We define a custom type that conforms to the property wrapper protocol. We can add additional logic of how the value is get and set. I will create a struct called 12 or less that will return the value that is always equal or less than 12. I would need to create a number and a wrapped value. For the wrapped value I create a getter and define the limit in the setter. The setter ensures that the new values are less or equal than 12. Now, after we created the management code, we can apply it to the property. Wrapper's name is written always before the value. Remember this small difference between hashtags and the property wrappers. <laughs> I will make a small rectangle struct with height and width. Its dimension should be less or equal than 12. We have applied a property. Let's see what happens if we set the height to 24, which definitely exceeds the limit. The wrapper puts the property back to 12. Isn't this amazing? It's important to know that the property wrappers are responsible for storing the wrapped value. Even so, I previously said that we need to write a name of property before using it, there is still a way of how not to do that and still getting the same results. For example, let's create a struct small rectangle. Here we will wrap its properties explicitly instead of writing 12 or less property as an attribute. The height and width property store an instance of property wrapper 12 or less. The getter and setter for height and width wrap access to the wrapped value property. It's important to mention that we can set the value for the wrapped property, but there is no initial value. So if we do not set anything, there won't be any value there. Then there comes a question, how do we set initial value for the wrapped property? Of course, with the initializer in the management code in the wrapper. 
initializer gives a chance to customize initialization of property, and there is a minimum function and predefined maximum value. It's easy to solve by adding a various initializers to the wrapper management code. Let's look at a practical example. Here is an expanded version of 12 or less struct. But now we added three types of initializers that allow to set different kinds of initial values to the wrapped property. We offer different options of how to initialize the value. First, init method is used to set up the wrapper if you don't specify anything. So we create a variable zero rectangle. There will be a default values of zero and 12. Next initializer example, when the property has initial value. The Swift uses init wrapped value initializer to set up the wrapper. We create a struct unit rectangle which specified height and width. The instances of small number are created by calling small number wrapped value. So gently in my ear. Coming back to you, babe I'll soon be there. Third option is that if you write arguments in the parenthesis after the custom attribute, let's create a narrow rectangle struct where we specify a maximum wrapper value and try to add the value that exceeds it. Swift calls a third initializer that specifies maximum value.
if we create a hay or wheat that are more than the expected maximum, we just get the maximum volume. Property wrappers can also define a projected value. Projected value is used to pass the value down a view hierarchy. The projecting value has the same name as a wrapped value. The only difference is that it starts with a dollar sign. Even having the same names, projected values do not interfere with the wrapped values, simply because the code cannot define the properties that start with a dollar sign. In the previous example, with a small number, we tried to create a property that exceeds the maximum. But before the value was stored, it was adjusted to the maximum. Let's add a projected value property to the small number structure to keep a track whether the property wrapper is adjusted to new value before storing. So when we define some number as 4 and then access it with dollar sign, we get a projected value which is false. And if you write some number as 55, the projected value will be true. Projected value can be any type. Also, when you access a projected value from the code that's a part of a type, like property getter or an instance method, you can omit itself. So now you know how to create a customized property wrapper. I leave below this video some links for the documentation. In the next video, I will explain about the built-in property wrappers. For the knowledge check, I have made some questions in short. If you can answer them, you are good to go for the next part of the video. If not, you can either have a look once more at this video or read the documentation. I hope that this video was useful for you. Thank you for watching it. Don't forget to subscribe on my channel. Hit the bell button and see you in the next videos. You'll never see me.